In this video we're going to describe a subset of uh, AVR instructions. So out of the all instructions that are offered by this architecture we selected only a few representative ones and we're going to describe here this subset. But before going into the discussion let's just remember that the source of all this information there is a document which is called AVR 8 instruction set and in there you can find the detailed description of all the instructions that are offered by this architecture and another thing before I start the description is that we are going to assume that whenever I write RD what I mean this is a destination register whenever I write RR is a source register and I'm going to also use capital K to represent a constant and lowercase k to represent a memory address. Okay, having said that, the first category of instructions we're going to call it instructions for data transfer. And in these instructions we encounter perhaps the simplest one of all, which is the one that moves rd comma rr and what it does is rd takes the value of rr. Now what we mean by this notation is that both registers rd and rr do not exist in the architecture but we are, what we are referring to is any register in the register file and any register in the register file this one is the destination because it's the one that receives the data or the result and this one is the one we read that's why we name it rr. Now other interesting instructions to transfer data is for example LDI which admits a register as first operand and a constant as a second operand. This would be the instruction to load one specific number into a register. The only restriction is that RD must be a register between 16 and 31 and the constant K must be between 0 and 255 and this restriction comes from the encoding because it's using 16 bits for the whole instruction. Another interesting instruction is LD and this brings data from memory into register RD and the three possibilities is to specify X, register X, register Y and register Z which means that register X is actually the concatenation of registers 27 and 28 register Y is the 16-bit register obtained when we concatenate R20, sorry, R30 with R29 and Z or Z is the register obtained by concatenating R31 with R30. So LD allows us to use these three registers which means that there is a 16-bit value here we use to go to memory to that address and whatever is in that address we load it into RD. Now there are other two variations of these instructions that are very powerful. Instead of X we put X plus or Y plus or Z plus and another, a third variant which is minus X minus Y and minus Z. This one goes to memory this one goes to memory and the register is post incremented and this one goes to memory as well but the register is pre decremented. This is a very powerful instruction because if you are accessing data in memory that are in consecutive positions you are doing two things at the same time getting the data from memory and increasing or decreasing the register that contains the other. So this uh, instruction is very common. Another interesting one for data transfer is LDD and this is another variation of an instruction that goes to memory in this case we can do Y plus Q or Z plus Q. Uh, not the register X is not allowed to be used in this type of instruction and it does something similar to the previous one uh, with the difference that it goes to memory but instead of going to memory just to the address containing register Y or register Z it adds the constants Q and in this case we need to take into account that Q must satisfy being between 0 and 63 so this is a way of adding an offset to a memory address which is stored in a register take that address, go to memory, come back and store the value in RD. Another interesting one 
LDS, also data transfer. This is uh, very intuitive because what it does is K is a memory address. So we just go to memory to the position specified by K, bring that value. These are all instructions, except like the first one, the LDI, LD, LDD, and LDS. They bring data from memory into register. Well, the processor, of course, offers the analogous instructions to bring data to memory, from registers to memory. So in this case, the ST instruction is also going to have three possible variants with X, Y, and Z. And what it's going to do is take RR and store it in the memory address computed or containing this register with the same two variants here in x plus y plus z plus we will do a post increment and with minus x minus y minus z the register is first decremented and then we store the data in register rr in that location in memory we also have the instruction std with two variables variable variants sorry y plus q in z plus q comma RR, which does the analogous thing as LDD, which is it goes to memory to the address included in register Y plus the offset Q. And again, we have the same restriction. In this case, 0 is less than Q, less than 63, less or equal. And the final one, which is similar to LDS, in this case is STS. And so what it does is brings directly the value of register RR to the memory position specified by K. So this one stores RR in memory position K. So these are the data transfer instructions, some of them. Um, another interesting category is the arithmetic. These are very intuitive and very simple at the same time. We have addition add with rd and rr which means this instruction adds rr to rd and stores the result in rd analogously we also have the subtraction sub rd rr to register so rd ends up having the result of rd minus rr then we have two very simple instruction inc rd dec rd which increment and decrement a register and another very simple one with one single operand neg rd which just changes the sign of register rd so if, if it has the value of 15 after this instruction it has the value minus 15 and finally in the arithmetic category are going to include also mul rd comma rr which does a multiplication of rr times rd they both are 8 bit registers but the result needs to be represented with 16, re 16 bits and the convention for this microprocessor is to store the result in the 16-bit register that appears when we concatenate R1 followed by R0. R1 will contain the most significant bytes of the result, R0 the least significant bytes. So this is the second category of instructions, the arithmetic ones. Third, logic instructions. These are very intuitive. We have the AND or conjunction RD, comma RR, which is similar to this add, in the sense that RD again gets the result of the bitwise conjunction between RR and RD, or for the disjunction RD, RR analogously, and EOR, which is the exclusive OR, again of two 8 bit registers RD and RR and as usual the result is stored in RD. So these are the three logic instructions that are available in the architecture. The next category is the rotate and shift. These are interesting instructions because they allow us to access the bits in the middle of a byte. So the first two ones are LSL or LSR, one of the two, and one single register. And what they do, these instructions, is that they shift the value of a register in the following way. So this would be the one that shifts to the right, 
and the bit that comes out goes into the carry flag so it's shifted like this and a zero enters here and the other one is the symmetrical a zero enters here and this bit goes into the carry flag shifting over here so this would be shift to the right and this would be shift to the left the left two more instructions which are similar to this one but slightly different are R O L R O R again with one single register R D in this case what these instructions consider is that the register appears as a circular register with the carry flag at the end but the bit that is in the carry is now included as the first bit that is if we shift to the right if we shift to the left the situation is analogous we shift here the most significant bit, bit goes to the carry and the carry enters this bit so this is as if the register together with the carry make a circular register and shifts one position or rotates one position that register and finally we have one additional shift and rotate instruction which is ASR all of them with one single operand RD and this is a little bit similar it shifts to the right the last bit goes into the carry but the most significant bit is replicated so this is similar to dividing by two and these two operations here are also similar to dividing by two and multiplying by two although these ones are for unsigned and these will work also for sign integers okay our next category is one of the interesting ones it is what we call the compare instructions two instructions are included here one is CP RD RR and the other one is CPI RDK a constant the only thing that these two instructions do is they perform the subtraction so this one would do RD minus RR so from that point of view they seem very similar to these instructions up here this one does RD minus K but the condition of this or the result of this subtraction is not stored in any register but only reflected in the flags of the status register so this is a very interesting category and this category is actually very powerful when we combine it with the following one which is the jump and branch category of instructions we have a few of them here let's start with the easiest one jump k we are only given one single operand which is a memory address and this is very simple to describe you just are making the processor go to execute the instruction in position k this pair of instructions is where things get a bit interesting BREQ or BRNE and a memory address so this is what we call branch instructions branch instructions are those that they branch or not depending on a condition so in this case what we are asking is if things have been equal or different depending if we're using BREQ or BRNA then go to K so this is a conditional jump we need to check a condition which is set by a previous operation typically a compare instruction as we will see here and then the microprocessor either jumps to that location or keeps executing the sequence normally perhaps it's a bit more clear with the following two instructions BRSH or BRLO again an address K in this case if PRSH SH stands for same or higher and LO stands for lower so these two instructions will jump if the previous condition compare two numbers and one of them is the same or higher than the other then it goes to K same thing for VRL, BR, BRLO the condition is that if the two numbers previously compare one of them is lower than the other then you go to the address K the very important condition to have into account here is that these two instructions are considering unsigned numbers very important 
So we do have another pair of instructions that instead of considering the numbers unsigned, considers them signed as integers. And these two instructions are BRGE, BRLT, K, of course. And in here, the two conditions are pretty much the same with the difference, important difference, that these ones are referring to unsigned integers and these ones are referring to integers. And therefore the notation is a slightly different. Rather than referring to same or higher, what we do is say greater or equal. And for BRLT we say less than. So this is pretty much the same. However, when we refer to lower, we are implicitly referring to comparing unsigned numbers when we and when we say less than we are referring to compare signed numbers and the rest of the instruction works exactly the same if this condition is true and we go to k so as you can see these instructions are the ones that change how the instructions get the order in which instructions get executed now interestingly enough these two only make sense typically when they are all used together. First we compare, then we branch. Let's write an example here. Suppose that I'm comparing now RD with RR. So this instruction is the same we've seen here. It's a comparison instruction. And then next to that I write something like, for example, BRGE dest. So in here, what is happening is that we are performing the operation RD minus RR, and in here, what we are doing is branching if the RGE is the condition greater or equal, it's actually jumping or branching if RD is greater or equal than RR. And this is where these two set of instructions or these two subset of instructions uh, work together. First, we make a comparison. The comparison performs an arithmetic operation, the result of which is not stored in any register, but is reflected in the flags. And then the right branching instruction will check the value of those flags and decide if we branch or not. In general, if we have CP A comma B, and again, these are general placeholders, and a condition BR with certain condition here, again a placeholder, we can state that we branch if a condition b, or in other words, is as if this sequence of two instructions were comparing if a satisfies the condition specified here with respect to b, if we write it like this. And finally, the last category of instructions that we're going to cover in this summary are those used to invoke and return from subroutines. This is fairly, these are fairly simple. The first one is call and it has a unique operand which is a memory address and it basically does what it says. Calls subroutine in position K. And the complementary instruction is once you are done executing a subroutine you want to return. The return instruction though has no operands and just returns to the address on top of the stack. And this is perhaps one of the most important ingredients of the microprocessors, which is when we call a subroutine and we, when we return, the call of the subroutine K stores the return address in the stack and that's why the return instruction doesn't need any operand because it's taking the operand from the stack which was placed there previously by the corresponding call instruction. And this is the final set of instructions that we cover in this summary.